Okay, this is our ninth piece of prehistoric art. It's the Ambum Stone. Right over here on this map, you can see we're getting across the world here. It's located in Papua New Guinea, just north of Australia. It is a very fun piece. You can see uh, it's made of stone. It's made of what's called gray wacky, which is a super hard rock, volcanic rock. It, and it is the base layer of rock underneath Papua New Guinea. N not only though is it made of rock, it because a lot of art pieces are made of rock, it's just that its surface also looks like a bumpy, rocky surface. So it hasn't been polished perfectly smooth yet. The top of it is smooth. We'll deal with that when we talk about function. It is eight inches high. It shows highly skilled carving. It's likely a piece that took eight months for someone to make. It is anthropomorphic design uh, style it looks very much alive human almost in its eyes and its arms it is low profile carving low relief the eyes protrude from the background a bit i don't know if these are ears the nostrils protrude so do the arms and these seem like they are legs and the claws here are also low relief also, in terms of form, what do we see? Well, that long snout really is dominant in this design. So we think it resembles a long-beaked anteater. It could also resemble a marsupial, a kangaroo, and because it has this right, a stomach, looks like a pouch to me. But for me, it definitely looks like the saber-toothed squirrel from Ice Age. You've got to agree. Um, the significance of anteaters in this culture would have been that we need uh, fat in order for our brains to grow. And so there was a, a fair amount of fat on anteaters, enough to make them one of their sources of, of food. So that might be the reason for the anteater being honored in this stone. The function of this piece, it is a pestle. Perhaps you've heard of mortar and pestles. Here are some pretty common mortar and pestles. We see these throughout the Americas and Europe in this design. And you can see that these have been used. They're very, they're worn quite smooth. But what I would hope that you would recognize the difference between this, these mortar and pestles and this pestle and this mortar, which perhaps you can see, although the beak is cut off, oh, it's not cut off. Uh, it looks like this looks like a, a bird. And um, the next level of thinking that we would go to is why would a, a mortar and pestle, this seems like a daily use mortar and pestle, why would these be carved? And hopefully you would make the next jump then that these <laughs> are probably more designed for a special ritual. They are sacred. And the Inga people who lived on Papua New Guinea described that prior to European arrival, these two pieces, this one in particular that we're studying, was buried with ancestors. And so it's considered to be a part of the bones of the ancestors. It actually has some... Uh, spiritual aliveness, if that's a word. And so the amb this ambum stone would have been given regular sacrifices as if it were the true remnants of the ancestors. So quite sacred. Now that's not written down like all of our other pieces, but that's gained through a lot of observation and archeological study and oral storytelling. Another um, aspect to look at with this piece is context. And this piece was on loan to uh, a museum in France where it was unfortunately dropped on the floor and broke in three places. And you can see the 
break here up close. Um, this brings up the whole concept of where do where do re, not remains, but where do artifacts belong? In which museum should they live? This this Ambum Stone is currently mostly back home. It's in Canberra in a museum in Australia, right next to Papua New Guinea. And so it's more properly placed, but it was sold to missionaries prior or, you know, on the, on the with the arrival of Europeans. So it's got a, a storied history of, you know, involving European exchange. So there's some real concern about, I mean, museums loan objects to one another all the time, art all the time. And so that is expected, but um, this has some serious sacred value. And we can see that with this stamp. In our stamps, we display to the world what we value as a culture. And um, what's interesting to me, I just noticed that this illustrates the, the um, crack in the album stone. This is a picture taken prior to the crack. So I think that's illustrative of the valuing of culture and the dangers that can happen when we exchange. Okay, the Ambum Stone. <laughs>